I've done 100k, I've done 20k, I've done 10k, and today I'm going to do the 10 best looking cars you can get for under 5k instead. Obviously, all my opinion, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below, but I genuinely think all 10 of these cars look really good for this kind of price range. So hit the like button to see more videos like this, subscribe as well if you're new. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> I would argue that the original Mini might be one of the most iconic looking cars of all time and through its many years, manufacturers and iterations, it retained that same look and size that made it such a special and cool little car with history dating all the way back to 1959. For our 5k price limit however, you'll only get yourself into one of the most recent ones, the Mark 7 Rover iteration of the Mini. That means you'll be getting a 1.3 litre inline 4 engine, making 62 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 12.2 seconds seconds, but clearly getting a Mini is not about pace and performance. This Mini was so popular that it outlived the car that was meant to replace it, the Metro. In the world of British cars, it doesn't get much more special and universally loved than a Mini. 4.5k will get you into one of these that isn't a project car, and 5k is enough for a 1994 model with 100k on it. Mechanically, these cars are pretty strong, but more importantly, they're very simple to work on. Another classic taking ninth on this list, and one of the most iconic and well-loved Mercedes, possibly of all time. The Mercedes 190e is the grandfather of the C-classes that we see today, but specifically came as a saloon rather than as a coupe or estate. And though its body shape is very simple, it's still a stunning looking Merc for the money, grandiose enough to be a luxury Merc, but boxy enough to have captured the imaginations of multiple car models around the world. Standard though amongst the engine options is a 2 litre inline 4 which makes 118 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in a rather sedate time of 10.6 seconds. What's amazing amazing about these is that they were massively over-engineered according to Mercedes, and it comes from a time when Mercedes were basically the top dogs when it came to quality. For that reason, these have a great reputation for reliability, and in many developing countries you'll commonly see them still running around as dependable taxis or daily drivers. 3k is the minimum that I found these listed for, and 5k gets you a 1993 model with 100k on it. Easily one of the best looking alphas of the modern era has to be the Brera, with its swooping lines, two long doors, and slope at the back, meaning it's apparently a coupe rather than a hatchback. But one of the key reasons why this car is so pretty is the fact that it was designed by Giorgetto Giugiaro, one of the most decorated car designers ever during a stint at famous design house Ital Design. Some of his designs are considered amongst the most beautiful cars in the world, like the Giulia Sprint GT and the Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta, and some cars he worked on are amongst the most important in motoring history, like the Mark 1 Golf GT. So the fact that you can get into the Brera as pretty as it is, starting at around 2k is pretty insane. For 5k you'll be getting yourself a 2009 model with 80k on the clock. And for that money you'll be getting a 2.4 litre turbocharged inline 5 engine in JTDM spec, which puts out 200 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 7.8 seconds, but water pumps on these can be weak, same with the drive shafts and swell flaps. You'll have to forgive me for putting my own car on this list, the Mark 1 Mazda MX-5, which again is one of the most iconic shapes in all of motoring history and it absolutely is the most iconic roadster of all time at least in my opinion. The pop-up headlights obviously play a large role in that but the rest of the car is great looking too. The fact that it's super small denoting a different time for car design, the inspiration it's taken from classic British roadsters of the past all coming together to make something quite special. It comes with two engine options, I have the 1.8 litre inline 4 block that puts out 140 brake horsepower taking it to 60 and 7.8 seven seconds but do watch out for rust on these and lifter tick being the two main issues. Prices are going up so now it's mostly only Japanese imports available for under 5k as they start at around 3k and 5k gets you a 1998 model with 100k on it. The best thing about this car though is not how it looks it's how it handles. I've driven many cars so far and nothing has given me as much of a smile as my Mark 1 MX-5. Rogue One taking sixth on this list the Abarth Punto Evo which was cancelled pretty early in its life due to super Super low sales compared to what Abarth wanted, and of course, it was sort of a competitor to the 500 Abarth. However, in terms of looks, I really am a fan of the Evo with its more aggressive body stylings, but importantly, proper hot hat shape, sticking to the three doors, and offering some trick Abarth flary bits all around, similar to what the 500 Abarth gets today. And guess who designed it? Giorgetto Giugiaro, of course, which explains a lot. Add on a nice interior spec, and these are properly cool, though I would probably say that the best spec is the most boring 
boring white with red trimmings. These come with a 1.4 litre turbocharged inline 4, producing 162 brake horsepower, taking them to 60 in 7.6 seconds. Four and a half grand will get you into one of these, and 5k is enough for a 2010 model with 100k on the clock. Generally, outside of some build quality issues, these haven't been bad on reliability, though owners do often rag on the cheap interiors. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you are, then do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new. And let me know in the comments down below, what is the best looking car that you have ever owned? There was a time where the E36 Generation 3 Series became a bit naff, but in time, just like the E30 before it, it's become pretty sought after. I'm normally a hard top guy, but the E36 Cabriolet with the roof down just does something different to me. Yes, the coupe is good looking, but the convertible, particularly in the later years, is a rude looking car. Part of the reason for this was just how much of a focus there was on aero with this car. Look at how boxy the E30 was, aero was clearly not of any real importance, whereas the E36 tried to have a bit more of a fluid design, and considering BMWs are typically known for being boxy, I think the E36 generation has only grown in popularity because it really is a little bit different. There are multiple engine options including a 2.8 litre inline 6 which makes 193 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 7.6 seconds, and you'll find them starting at 3.5k, with 5k being enough for a 1996 model with 100k on it. The cooling system is a key point of failure on these due to the brittle plastic parts getting damaged over time. When the RCZ concept showed up at the 2007 Frankfurt Motor Show, I'm not sure Peugeot expected the levels of interest and the call for the car to be built in real life that ultimately followed. It feels so rare that a concept car that everyone falls in love with actually becomes reality that's anything like the concept, but the mad people at Peugeot committed and that famous double bubble roof, sports car looks, in what's effectively a hatchback package, given it's on the same platform as the 308, did turn out to be pretty popular on sales too. We sadly can't get the RCZ R for our money, but we can get the GT with a 1.6 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine, producing 197 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 7.4 seconds. If you want one, they start at around £2,000 and 5k will get you a 2010 model with 80k on the clock. Rust is sadly a problem on these. There are known build issues on the interior in particular, and brakes have been the source of a few issues too. It's the rarest car on the list taking third, the Audi A4 DTM Special Edition, which is built to celebrate and sort of emulate the actual DTM race car that won three constructors championships and five drivers championships in the German Touring Car Championship. Aesthetically, the differences between it and your average A4 are pretty minor, but enough to set it apart in a crowd of A4s to someone with the right eye for it, and I think that the front bumper, wheel arches, and alloys in particular do look pretty sick. Add on the fact that it came with slightly more power than the standard A4 thanks to an ECU tune, and you had enough of a different package for Audi to make a few extra sales. That power comes from its 2 litre turbocharged inline 4, making 216 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.7 seconds, not bad for a non-RS product. They'll run you around our 5k limit at the bottom end now though, and they're hard to find with just 143 on the roads in the UK right now. These have been pretty good on reliability in line with the usual A4, and owners do actually rave about them. In second we have the Jaguar XK8. Now I did include the more aggressive and slightly rarer facelift XKR in my 10k video on this topic, but the XK8 is only slightly less pretty, slightly less performance, and no less of a classic. And given its shape in the right spec, these things are an incredibly attractive Grand Tourer, even in convertible spec with the roof down, showing off that old school British regal interior which despite being incredibly dated, is quite a charming time capsule. As it takes some of its design philosophy from the beloved E-Type Jag, it's hard not to find these at least a little bit pretty, and the best examples are already fetching upwards of 30k. Instead of the 4.2 litre block in that XKR, this gets a non-supercharged 4 litre V8, which makes 290 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.4 seconds, which isn't bad for a car of its age. And if you want to get into one, you'll need to spend 2.5k at the bottom end, with 5k getting you a 1997 model with 100k on the clock. They do come with classic car maintenance though, and high oil consumption isn't uncommon. Taking the top spot on this list is probably the most controversial car, but one I personally think looks really good, and is only getting better with age. The Renault Megane RS, the one with the sizeable posterior, is a properly nice car in my opinion, but specifically in 3-door spec, somehow the five door just doesn't hit the same. Yes, the rear gets all the attention and causes the biggest ruckus, but the front is actually great looking, very reminiscent of the Clio V6 Phase 2, with the only thing really letting the car down being the interior, which isn't the most exciting of places to be, sadly. One benefit of this car too is that if you don't care about performance, you can get a cheaper diesel model, but I would prefer 
prefer to go for the slightly pricier petrol example, which starts at around two and a half grand, with double that getting you a 2004 model with 90k on it. That would get you a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine making 225 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.3 seconds. Engine mounts and window regulators have been troublesome, but for an old French car, they're quite reliable. And so there you have it. That is 10 of the best looking cars you can buy for under £5,000. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. If you want to see the best looking cars that are under 100k instead, other end of the spectrum, then click up here. Subscribe as well down here. Huge thanks to the patrons for their support. You guys are well for watching. I'll see you in the next one.